Thank you so much for calling in. I have been so excited to talk to you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so my first question for you is who or what inspired you to get into stand up? Um, yeah, I, I guess I've, I've been watching so many comics. It, it's not any one singular person. I think that I watched a lot of uh, people when I was little that now, you know, they made me laugh back then. And now I'm, I'm into comedy maybe because of them. But I think like, a lot of people like um, Bill Burr, Maria Bamford, Wanda Sykes is very funny. And, uh, I watched Martin Lawrence and Jamie Foxx growing up as well. So those were, those were really big as I was a little kid, like watching them and then coming up and everything. Oh, cool. Um, so when you're writing your material is anything and everything fair game? Yeah, I try to just talk about things that I fully understand. So that way I can communicate in a way that, I think people will understand. So I, I, I think that when you have a, a shared language or a shared understanding of something, it's very easy to make it funny. Like if we all have a shared experience, we can talk about it in a way that you don't have to start by describing it and and going into detail about little little intricate things. It's like as soon as we start talking, we both know um, what we're talking about. It's why like friends can make each other laugh so easily because with friends, there's so much shared history and shared language that you already have inside jokes with your friend that no one else has or, or people wouldn't understand. And so that's that's kind of what I'm trying to have with the whole world in a sense. Oh, cool. Um, so what is the best part of writing for The Daily Show with Trevor Noah? Um, I made a lot of really great friends and, and that, that I think are incredibly smart and funny um, that have helped me be a better writer and a better comedian and everything. And I think that's been the biggest takeaway. It's been great to write for the show and learn how to write TV and, and, and form jokes and stories better. But the friends that I've made so far are like people that I really keep up with. And I think are, are incredible creators, you know? Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, so I know that you also wrote for Jimmy Fallon's show. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like making your comedy debut on that show? It was nice because I because I had already been working there. It sort of felt like home. I wasn't scared. Like, I think I would be if it had been another show or something. I think that it was just much easier because I already knew everyone. Um, so it made it, it made it really fun as opposed to like, I don't know, sometimes you go somewhere and the nerves kick in and you're just like, oh, what am I doing here? But there, you know, I had been working there for a long enough time that I was just really comfortable and had been in the room a bunch of times and everything. So it just felt like home. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, what was the inspiration for your uh, mixtape elusive? Oh, I think that for the most part, I, I always wanted to write music like write lyrics and produce music and everything. And, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't even call myself like a music producer. I still have so much to learn and, and, um, I've been in good company that's been teaching me and helping me. But I think that for the most part, I just kind of saw the year everyone was having in 2020. And I thought it would be fun to make something, um, that, sort of reflected that, but also had comedy in it. And I, I had never seen a, like a music comedy hybrid mixtape like that. So I thought, why not make one? And, you know, if it, it's one of those things that it didn't exist to me, at least before I made it, I'm sure other people have done certain things, but um, it was one of those things that's either no one's done it because it's a really good idea or no one's done it because it's a really bad idea. And <laughs> I think that it, it turned out well. So I think it was a good idea and I plan to keep making more of them. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so what made you decide to combine comedy and music? 
Uh, well, I think for the most part, comedy is very much of the time. Like, um, there are a lot of jokes that are going to work great by decade. They're going to work great to a certain demographic of people or they're going to work great for the time in your life that you're listening to the joke whereas music has way more of a like transitional property as far as you can listen to a song and not necessarily understand the context with which it was written but know that you like the song whereas with jokes like i said before you have to have that shared language and experience so i, I want to make something that could outlive the time that we were in so maybe one day when no one really talks about COVID or anything anymore people might still enjoy these songs, you know? So even if they don't fully relate to the comedy, there's an extension of the project that people really connect with. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, what is your favorite joke to tell? I'm trying to think, that's a good question. I don't know if I have a, if I have a favorite one. Um, Oof, that's tough. Yeah, I don't know if I have a favorite. I, I we can we come back to that one? I'll try to think yeah. of one while we talk about other stuff. Yeah. Um. So, have you ever told a joke that didn't land um, quite as well as you expected? I mean, that's a nice way to put it. I've done that many <laughs> times, and it. it not only did not land how I expected, it didn't land at all. It, it just did. I just have told jokes that just did not go well. Like it just didn't didn't work out, which, you know, I, I feel like that's part of learning. And the whole point of comedy is, is to learn how to express yourself in a way that connects with people and that people find funny. So you're going to say things that people either don't really get what you mean or like maybe they just don't find it funny. Maybe it's not their brand of humor or maybe there's not that shared language. There's not that shared understanding of the thing that you're talking about. And so it's it's really just a part of the the journey. So I don't I don't stress about it as much anymore. I used to really get bumped out. I used to like have a joke and not do well. They're just like, oh, OK, I guess you don't like me at all. Uh, but now now I've learned to accept and, and sort of roll with it and, and take into account that maybe the joke and the, the wording of the joke just needs work or maybe you know there, there's so many factors and as you get better at comedy you learn what those factors are and it becomes easier to make the transition but yeah sometimes you're just you're just in a bind where you're like oh man they it like like that, that's such a terrible feeling to just like have them staring at you like they maybe they don't even know that you finished the joke and they're just like like oh no <laughs> they're expecting more words and not out of words yeah. Um, so, uh, how, how do you keep going after, um, a joke doesn't land? Oh, you know, I've started to just not, not act like it was a joke. I've started to just roll through it. Just keep talking. I, I, I just move on to the next one. Cause clearly they didn't, it did land. So I could maybe play it off. Like it wasn't even a joke. Maybe that was just a thought and then we move on and then we keep talking. Yeah. Uh, uh, is there a comedian that you would like to perform with one day? Um. Yeah, I mean, I I, I love uh, Bill Burr. I think he's great, uh, and I really enjoy uh, Maria Bamford. Like I said before, and I think she's amazing. So I think that those two and. You know, if if nothing else, to just see what performing at a stadium is like, maybe Kevin Hart. But I don't even know. A stadium is so big. Like when when you're performing at a place that's like a club, you can really connect with people. You can look them in the eye. You can get a response from them. You can hear them in real time. But if you're performing in a big enough place, you actually can't hear anything or they're so far away. You're like, I think you're enjoying it. Like, I don't even have the best eyesight, so I'm not even sure I would see them if they were smiling or not at me. Like it, it when you're doing big videos, use you start from so they're so far away from you that you're like i hope this is working i don't know <laughs> uh, uh, do you have a pre-show ritual to get ready for a show 
No, I, I wish I was that prepared. I wish, I, you know, I wish that I was professional enough to be like, oh, yes, I go into a room and I meditate. I, I don't know. I just sort of I might listen to some music, maybe go over the set. I, I like I've, I've been asked this before and I really wish I had like a cooler answer. You know, I need to start a pre-show ritual just to be able to answer this in a way that's impressive to people. <laughs> Uh, so if you could have any song playing to announce your entrance into a room, what song would it be? Mm, uh, let's see. Okay. Um, there's a song by Francis and the Lights called You Still Take Me to the Light, and it's one of my favorite songs it became one of my favorite songs when they when they dropped it which i think was in 2020 uh maybe even 2019 but it's an incredible song and so yeah that's 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 amazing oh cool i'll have to listen to that i haven't heard it yeah they're they're really great they've been my favorite band for years i think you know i, I don't know what your musical tastes are like what you really like but they they're a little funky they have some uh some like electronic elements in there and they're just they're great collaborated with a bunch of people so even if you don't know them you probably know some of the people they've worked with like they're they're awesome oh cool uh so um what show are you currently binge watching okay let's see i feel like i'm in between shows at the moment i think okay so what i've mainly been doing is is uh on hbo watching a lot of the batman animated series over again uh, i used to watch that growing up and so the fact that the whole series is on hbo right now is fire i'm 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 like i'm going in and i'll even have it playing in the background sometimes when i'm really not paying attention but just watching them over again they were ahead of their time they were amazing Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what we've been, my family and I have been watching lately. We don't have a show right now that we're binge watching. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, but I've been watching like a bunch of stand up on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So that, so. That's been really entertaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's dope. I mean, I, I watch a decent amount of stand up. Um, but as far as like series of stand up, there haven't been too many. There's when you think about it, they, they used to do the half hour series on Comedy Central every year. And then they did the Netflix like 15s and the Netflix 30s, like the stand, the standups and stuff. Uh, and then they did Comedians of the World and everything. But I feel like as far as series go, there's not too many new ones out right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, but if you haven't uh, seen it, I, um, I would recommend, well, really, any of John Mulaney's and yeah, then yeah. Uh, Jack Whitehall. Yeah. Uh, and then Catherine Ryan's uh, Glitter Room. Okay. Was, yeah. Yeah, I'll <laughs> check those out because I think that that, yeah, I've seen some Mulaney, but I haven't seen the other two. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, oh, and then Reese Nicholson. Uh, that's another one that um i highly suggest that because he and yeah it's just it's very funny all yeah. of them are so yeah thanks for the recommendation then yeah <laughs> um so what terrible movie do you secretly love um okay let's see this, this is also a tough one because i actually really love to watch bad movies sometimes like sometimes a bad movie will just crack you up yeah. or, or you can just leave it on without having to really follow the plot. Cause you just know it's terrible. Yeah. Um, let's see. They're usually old. 
I okay. I'll I'll tell you this. I actually can't decide if Drumline is a good movie or a bad movie. Nick Cannon and Drumline. I don't like. I I still haven't decided. And I know I've watched it a ton of times. And there are parts of it that are amazing. But the overall, like, there are some parts of it that I didn't quite understand. So maybe that's the one that because when i tell people drumline they're like drumline like as far as movies i really like to watch over and over um but i i, I guess that's gonna have to be my answer i've watched drumline so many times <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll have to look that up because i haven't even heard of that so <laughs> it's it's like it i think it's you know before i think before you would have really been into movies it's like a, a early 2000s movie i think so it's it's like it, and it, it's fine it's fine it's not bad but it's also i don't know it's weirdly like there are parts of it where you're like wow i'm, I'm getting this excited about them drumming <laughs> like is it like the the stakes in the in the movie don't always make sense where you're like oh man he's really drumming right now it's like yeah but that's it's in the name I don't know why they've hyped me up like this. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. There's a movie called Ishtar that mm -hmm. uh, my family and I love. Like it's listed as one of the worst movies ever made, but <laughs> it's hilarious. Like we all love it. Yeah. Um, so, and there is what there is a plot in the movie that um uh when we were watching it again a while ago we were thinking we'd never actually stop to think about it but this plot doesn't make any sense with yeah. the movie. <laughs> um, and it's hilarious <laughs> so, uh, yeah yeah i have to check it ishtar yeah okay yeah i'll make so, a note um, of it now that's so yeah. funny yeah, I'm yeah, and I'm writing down drum lines. So. <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. Okay. Yeah. The fact that the plot doesn't make any sense is amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like overall, I uh, I don't know. There, yeah, there is like that part of the plot doesn't make any sense, but then the other part, like it does make sense. So mm -hmm. we. We were saying we just think they were trying to add like a, a I don't even know. They were just trying to add some like action or something to the yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah. So, as many elements as possible, you know? Yeah. Bring everybody in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so uh, when you're having a bad day, what do you do to cheer yourself up? Uh, so sometimes I will listen to Francis and the Lights, favorite band. And then um, there are times where I'll try to just sit back and, um, and like give a good think about why I'm not having a good day. Because sometimes, sometimes it's just me. Sometimes it's just in a bad mood or um, things didn't go the way I wanted or something. And then sometimes it's an, it's an external thing that I can't control. So I have to just accept that. But I think sometimes sitting down and really thinking about why you feel the way you feel is the best thing that you can do. Because other than that, like outside of that, you're just reacting to everything, which is not the best way to handle life just co yeah. constantly reacting so yeah that's my main thing I'll, I'll listen to some music sometimes i'll watch some comedy or i'll just sit back and if i have the time you know in the day really try to think about how i feel and why yeah um yeah uh so um my last question for you is who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Um, hmm, let's see. Okay, okay. Uh, my, my answer is slightly split. 
So they're like, because I consider a superhero to be, you know, different things. Um, it may sound a bit cheesy, but one is my mom because my mom is like insanely generous and, and, uh, exceedingly patient. And she, you know, took care of my grandmother when my grandmother got sick and just took care of her literally worked part of her day into making sure my grandma was okay and visiting her every day. So she didn't even have a lunch break. She would just go from work to, you know, go see about my grandma and my granddad and then go back to work and everything. And then did it all without complaint. And she still is like super, super generous. She's always trying to figure out how to help people and take care of people and everything. Um, and I, I just think that it takes it takes more than you can ask of a person for someone to be that um, selfless and, and caring about other people. And then the other one, just because I, I also think that being a superhero has, you know, some got to have some uh, sort of like physical qualities. There's a there's a um, a mixed martial artist named Hamza Chemaev that's like really strong and it is terrifying he like he can literally like just pick dudes up that are slightly bigger than him and i'm like that's yeah. crazy like that's it that's wild like that if if superman were real he'd be doing stuff like that that's that, like sure he'd help people but also wow like you see you see him do it too and it's like he he picks everyone up like they're not heavy and people are heavy so it's so <laughs> wild that he just like will pick people up and run around with them and uh, i don't know it blows my mind so i have to say those two Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, my, uh, my mom and my sister are my um, superheroes. Although right now I'm, I'm mad at my sister. Not really, but I tell her I am because she's going back to school this weekend and I don't want oh, to yeah. leave. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like no, you're not allowed to leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, I felt like that before for sure. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And she is um, also a huge fan of yours, so oh, that's she very would, kind. Yeah, she was very excited that I was interviewing you today. <laughs> oh wow! Well, tell her thank you. I appreciate it, and and thank you too for following everything and that that does mean a lot to me so the fact that you asked me to come on and the fact that I get to talk to you and everything is just that, that really means a lot I really appreciate you well, thank you for calling in I've had so much fun talking to you so yeah well I'll catch you in a bit you have a great rest of the day thank you you too thank you Josh right. yeah. see ya bye